Again, looking at Joseph in Genesis 39. And last Sunday we left off, uh, Joseph had just been imprisoned for something that he didn't do. Something for which he was not guilty. He was accused, he was tried, he was convicted, and he was sentenced unjustly. Exactly as our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, was. So we're going to continue with the story. And we're going to see just what God's purpose was for all of this trial and trouble that came into Joseph's life. So let's pick it up at verse 21, down to the end of the chapter, Genesis 39. 21, 22, 23. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Joseph's character and his godliness are consistent. And they produce consistent results. Okay? Just as it had been under Potiphar, God is still with him. And he blesses everything that Joseph does. So Joseph once again finds himself gaining favor with the one who's over him in authority and in power. Go to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. The first four verses of that chapter. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation, judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good works, at least they're not supposed to be, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Do that which is good, whether you get praise of them or not. Like I say, sometimes the people that God puts into positions of power and authority don't honor God and don't behave the way they should. That doesn't mean you don't do good, you don't do right. That's why it says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For he is the minister, verse 4, of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, or avenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Now there's a different... Uh, requirement for those people that God puts into power, the expectation of them. God's got an expectation of them. He puts them in a position of power, they answer to Him. And you got three spheres of authority in God's universe, okay? And that is the home, okay? and that is going to be the church, and then civil government. Every one of those has leaders within it, and that leader is expected to answer to God and do things according to God's way. But irregardless of whether they do or not, that's not going to justify you not doing what you're supposed to do and do right. Now, Joseph did. Joseph did right irregardless of this. Okay, so he's 20, maybe 21 years of age, okay, and this young man finds himself in the prison and being given... The responsibility, along with the power and authority to carry it out, of running the prison and the prisoners underneath the prison keeper. That's pretty amazing. But again, why? 
Joseph's character and godliness are one. Just like Potiphar, the prison keeper, looks to Joseph to care for everything with complete confidence. Why? Because like Potiphar, he has seen Joseph's faith in the Lord, how he behaves himself, he has seen his character, and trusts him. So in spite of all the ill <laughs> that has befallen poor Joseph, okay, you know, again, he's not angry. He's not sullen. He is not bitter. He is not downhearted. He doesn't complain. He doesn't whine. He doesn't lament. He doesn't vent. And if there are tears, and I have no doubt there were tears, that was done alone with him and God. You know, as I said last week, would that every believer, myself included, <laughs> exhibited such character when faced with the inevitable, inevitable trials and troubles that are going to come into your life. Amazing young man. So now the Lord starts moving events so that his desired end for putting Joseph here is going to come to pass. So we're going to go through chapter 40. I'm going to go pretty quickly here through it. I'm going to make the assumption you all have read the story of Joseph at least once in the past and you're going to have an idea. I'm going to skip through it pretty quickly to get us where I want us to be. So Genesis chapter 40, verse 1, it says, And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And, and uh, you know, you don't make a king mad. <laughs> Not a good thing to do. Okay, the butler, okay, this is the man who... Basically, he was the king's immediate attendant. Uh, he was the guy who was the food taster to make sure that the king wasn't going to get poisoned. How do you like that for a job? <laughs> yeah, no. Here, see if this is poison. Okay. Oh, king. Right. Uh, you know, he says later, you know, he, he, he squeezed the grapes, the juice from the grapes you know, into his cup to drink, you know. He was his immediate sir. He was right there, anything he needed, you know. That was the butler. The baker, he was exactly that. He was the baker, of, he was the one who was in charge of running the, the bakery there. So bread, uh, muffins, confectionaries, chocolate chip cookies, all that good stuff, you know. <laughs> you know, chocolate chip cookies came from Egypt, right? <laughs> Says so, right? <laughs> Anyway, so they they make the Pharaoh mad and they end up going to prison. So go to verse 4 through 8. The captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued a season in war. And they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in prison. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God. Tell me them, I pray you. This is God's working here in this. Now, several years have gone by. We're going to find here uh, that from the time that he gets put into prison to the time he comes before Pharaoh is going to be a period of about nine years. He's going to be 30 years old by the time he shows up to Pharaoh. Okay, he gets put in prison when he's 20, 21 years of age. Well, he's there for a while. So, uh, let's see, we want to get to, let's go down to verse 12. And Joseph said unto them, and they, 
you know, this is the interpretation. They tell him his dreams. I'm not going to go through all that. Uh, not necessary to know the, the dreams. Joseph said unto them, this is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou wast his butler. But think on me when it shall be well with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee, unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house, for indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews. And here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. So he's, this is what he's saying to the butler. The baker also tells him his dream. Pick it up, verse 18, down to the end. And Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee, and shall hang thee on a tree, and the bird shall eat thy flesh from off thee. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler and the chief baker among his servants, and he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again, and he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand, but he hanged the chief baker, as Joseph had interpreted to them. And yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forget him. So the Lord's given to Joseph the ability to understand and to interpret dreams. Now you're going to read in the Bible as you study the scripture, several instances in the Bible when God speaks to people through their subconscious mind by dreams. Go over to Job 33. Job 33. Verse 14 to 18. Job 33, beginning at verse 14. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. He keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. You're going to find several times, uh, you know, God speaks to Abimelech in a dream. He speaks here to Pharaoh in a dream. Uh, he speaks to Joseph. I mean, you're going to, all through here, where God will speak to me. I mean, every night before we go to sleep, that's one of the things I pray for, is God speak to us in our subconscious mind as we sleep. And if you're filling yourself with the things of God, with the Word of God, okay, that makes that much more possible. And dreams sometimes do have a meaning that can be attached to them. Okay? But you need to have God give you the ability to grasp and understand what's being spoken. That's God's knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So in Genesis chapter 41, verse 1. Okay. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. So two years after these dreams have been told to Joseph, and he's interpreted them for these two men and what comes to pass. So it's been two years. So he's been... The time that he was in, first in prison to the time that the incident with the, the butler and the baker occurs is seven years. Then there's a two-year period, nothing happens, and this is where we are now. Like I say, we've come to a point now where Joseph is now 30 years of age. He's been there in Egypt now 23 years. 23 years come to pass. Uh, and the Lord, 
now is going to give a dream to Pharaoh. Uh, so now we're going to go down verse 2 to 16 here in chapter 41. Behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kine, and those are cattle, as in cows, and fat-fleshed, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kine came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favored and lean-fleshed kind did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kind. So Pharaoh awoke. Beef, it's what's for dinner. <laughs> weird dream, right? I'm sure he woke up and said, what was that weirdness all about? And last time I have jalapeno peppers before I go to sleep. And he slept and dreamed the second time. And behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rank and good. And by the way, it's talking ears of corn. You go, oh, they didn't have corn. Yes, they did. <laughs> and people do silly stuff, you know. They had, you know, I'm, I'm talking about corn like wheat, you know, corn on the cob, corn. Yes, they most certainly did. And behold, seven thin ears and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. And he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Yeah, you want to, fellow. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants, and put me in ward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he. We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there with us a young man, a Hebrew servant, to the captain of the guard, and we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream he did interpret. And it came to pass as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself, and changed his raiment, and came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream. And there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Okay. Careless, thoughtless, <laughs> unthankful butler finally remembers Joseph. And so Pharaoh calls for him from the prison. You notice how Joseph is very careful before Pharaoh to give God the glory, as always should be done. It's not in me. If you get an answer, it comes from God. He wants him to know that. So in verses 17 through 24, Pharaoh repeats his dream to Joseph. I'm not going to go through there and reread it. We want to pick it up in verse 25 down to 32. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God has showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good kind are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. Remember we just wrote over there in, in Job where it says God speaketh. You know, twice. And okay. he mentions that here. The seven thin and ill favored kind that come up after them are seven years, and the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty through all the land of Egypt. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine, 
and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land, and the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following, for it shall be very grievous. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established of God. It's certain. That's why it's been doubled. Okay, the Lord has let Pharaoh know what he is about to do. But it required the Lord's knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, which he had given to Joseph in order for there to be an understanding of that dream. 1 Corinthians 2.14 1 Corinthians Chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Think about that. You know, Pharaoh might have just, oh, like I said, yeah, man, I, you know, I ate something that Man, I just had some crazy weird dreams here. Oh well, whatever, right? No, no, God would speak. Okay, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Their foolishness. That's why they they talk about us like they do. It's why they look at us like they do. It's why they say the things about us that they do. It doesn't negate the truth of God. Go to Matthew chapter thirteen. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 9 to 12. Lord Jesus Christ is speaking. Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. I almost sent that to somebody. Sent a comment on one of the really old videos from the church. Maybe. It says, can't hear you on it. That's what I was going to send. He who hath ears to hear. I said, no, don't, don't do that. Myself in trouble. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And that's the truth of it. You, know, you read the scriptures, you read the Bible, and the Holy Spirit of God shows you things. And, oh, you see something here, and it brings into your memory a verse over here, and you go back, and you're, you know, lost person who picks this book up and doesn't pick it up with a sincere heart, looking for truth, looking for light, sits there and tries to read that, and it's just, it's just nuts. This is craziness. <laughs> can I say? You know, because the thing is, you know, Pharaoh and the Egyptians knew who the Most High God is. They knew that, but they had rejected him and his knowledge, his wisdom, his understanding to worship the false gods that they had made for themselves, just like we've been discussing in Sunday school. They are going through Proverbs. So Joseph was placed there by the Lord okay, for this exact purpose at this exact moment in time to bring about God's purposes. Go to Esther chapter 4. Book of Esther. Over there. Book of Esther. I just get tired at the end of the night here. Yeah, where am I here? Hey, I'm trying to read the tabs and just 
one over there on my own. Okay, we want to get to, there we are, chapter 4. Wow. Tough when the eyeballs go. Esther, okay, we're looking at chapter 4, well-known verse for most here, uh, 13 and 14, okay. You know the story of Esther. And her uncles tell you they found out here about Haman, wants to kill all the Jews, uh, mad at Mordecai. Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their uh, enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed, and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. You got the Babylonian captivity, Mordecai and uh, his niece, her parents are dead, he's raising her as his own, go into that Babylonian captivity. She's taken to become King Ahasuerus, one of his many wives. Uh, but he very much falls in love with her. All of this happens, befalls her. She's there for a specific purpose, for a specific time and place and reason. And that's exact. who knows? Okay, but that you're here. And that's exactly... What's going on with Joseph? You're here for this specific reason. You're here for this time and place and purpose to fulfill God's will. And every one of us has got to think about that in our own lives. Sometimes we'll say, why am I going through what I'm going through? Why am I where I am at in my life right now? Why am I dealing with this right now? And it could be very well like to be. God's got, well, not very likely to be. It is. There's always reason and purpose behind it. Okay. God's will is being accomplished here. His putting Joseph where he has, having Joseph go through everything that he's gone through. Now, for these 23 years, I say he's 30 years old now. Okay. For such a time as this is why he's there. So back in Genesis 41, we pick it up at verse 38, all the way down to 46. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Well, uh, actually, let me back up here for a minute. I'm getting ahead of it. We want to read what the counsel is that he gives to him. So let's see, 33. Now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants. So God now goes a step further and leads Joseph to giving counsel. Okay, here's this 30-year-old Hebrew slave who's been a, you know, he's been in the joint now for nine years. So he's a con besides giving counsel to Pharaoh. <laughs> you know, this is the, the height of the power and the majesty of the kingdom of Egypt. Okay. Not long after this, Egypt starts a downward spiral that they never come back from. Okay. They're a third world country, if that much. And that's pretty much how they've been for 
you know, many, many, many years. But at this point in time, Egypt is the power of the world. Okay. And here you've got 30-year-old Joseph telling Pharaoh, well, here's what you got to do. <laughs> you know, and but God blesses it. Pick it up again, verse 38. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, 